We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order for our Tuesday, December 17th, 2018 special meeting. Heather, would you call the roll, please? Mound. Laundrew. Here. Reichert. Yes. O'Connell. Here. Yellowboy. Carlson. Here. Okay, up next we have approved second reading of our supplemental appropriation ordinance, ordinance number 973. Uh, that's in your packet. I'll get Heather to recap it one more time. There has been no changes from the first reading to the second. Um, the change that we did make at the last meeting was to supplement the payment to the Rodeo Foundation, that $65,000 under other general government. And the source of revenue for that was assigned fund balance. Other than that, there are no changes from the first reading to the second. Unless anybody has any questions. So any questions on the second reading of the supplemental appropriation? If not, I will call for a motion to approve the second reading. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Laundrew? Yes. Reichert? Yes. O'Connell? Yes. Carlson? Yes. Um, up next, we have uh, discuss and or approve the prisoner transport proposal. Um, we do have Commissioner Schlomer with us. Um, you also have it in your packet. So I guess, Marion, if, if you are going to speak to the council, I'd ask you to come up to the podium, to the microphone. But um, it's in your packet, and I'll let Heather and Christine talk a little bit about that as they put it together. Um. I will just go through a, a quick synopsis of how I, we come up with these figures. Um, this, this proposal has been gone over extensively with um, Commissioner Schlomer and a few others, and uh, Chief Madison, Christine, uh, the mayor. What we did was, in order to um, do the proposed transport to um, Falkton, um, Chief stated that we would probably need four certified officers. Um, so I have their wages, loaded wages, in this proposal along with 120 hours of overtime, which comes to uh, $61,000 per year per officer. Um, that we also have some uniforms and equipment, um, insurance, um, some specialized equipment such as uh, body cameras, uh, GPS, things of that nature. Uh, we have estimated fuel at 11500 for the year. And then we have some vehicle maintenance in there. Also in the proposal is uh, the city would request that we include uh, yearly cost of living increases into our proposal. Um, we would include the transfer of two vehicles from the county I would set up a special uh, fund to track all transport expenses and revenue from the county. That would be completely separate, so all expenses related whatsoever to transport would be out of this special revenue fund. Uh, the submit city would submit to the county a monthly financial report. Uh, the city uh, will return any remaining funds at the end of the year to the county, or if the county chooses, uh, they can carry those funds over for the following fiscal year. The city would be willing to provide a representative from the city to go to a commission meeting once a month to give a report of how things are going. And uh, the city then in turn would request a three-year contract uh, with the county with a six-month written notice for early termination by either party. We're on item number three, Jade, the prisoner transport. We just kind of hit the highlights, so I guess I would ask if there's any discussion from the council on any of this. Yeah, could you repeat all that? <laughs> <coughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Replay the tape. <laughs> yeah. Are these vehicles the ones that they've the county already has? Yeah, uh, we have because of the sheriff's department and then we have the jail uh, department over there, we'd have a couple extra vehicles if we decide to close the jail down and we just figured that we could
transfer those over to you and let you use those as transport vehicles then. Uh, for the most part, they'd be all set up other than I think uh, we talked about possibly adding a couple of different things to them, but that would be you know, at, at the city's expense then to do that. Um, I don't know if anybody has any, good, any questions from me or not, but one of the, 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 the whole thing behind this proposal was the fact that uh, we figured that it was probably in the best interest of the city of Mobridge and also the Walworth County just to be able to have Mobridge do the transporting because of the majority of the arrests in Walworth County are done in the city of Mobridge. And by doing that, we kind of eliminate the, the whole process of having the sheriff's department trying to get the transports from there over in Selby down to Falkton and everything else. Just uh, takes another wheel out of the cog to where it kind of congests things. But I don't know if you anybody has any other questions for me or for the county. I guess I can't think of anything else. I think Heather covered everything very well, what we talked about in the proposal. So I, uh, I guess I personally don't have anything else that jumps out at me. What happens if we have like two, three, four people going? Where, where are we going to put these people? I guess I don't, I mean, if you close Selby jail down and we only have two cells here, I mean, I wonder what we're going to do in that scenario. I guess you never know. I, yeah, and that, that's, a, that's one of those things that's really hard to, I think, come up with an answer, and maybe our police chief can help us with that a little bit. But uh, one thing that Falk County is willing to do for us, if we do decide to go that route and we end up signing a contract with them, they're looking at getting a transport bus that if for some reason we run into problems where all of a sudden we've got a a larger amount that need to be transferred uh, from here down to Falk County, they could bring a bus up to help us out. Um, and we know that that's always a possibility and you have to look at all those <coughs> different avenues, but it's, it's so hard to kind of plan for that type of a scenario. Right. But they're, they're definitely looking in a transport bus. Uh, the other avenue that that would help us with is the possibility that when it comes time to come back for court, uh, they might be able to bring two or three people back, four people, whatever that would be, uh, to take care of court dates. So that would help a lot in the transport. So I don't know if that answered your question yeah. or not, but. I was just thinking, you know, if, if we have nowhere to go with these people, you know, if we say we have a big fight in town and all of a sudden we got six people, five people arrested for, you know, we only have two. Yeah. Hey, Sean, I've got a question as well. Uh, what would be the total processing time from the time they left Mobridge to the time they came back, the officers? Well, I mean, a guesstimate on that. Four to five hours. Four to five hours? Yeah. So that would give you... So that would be a terrible stretch of time to be have somebody here, you know, and then when, by the time you get back to bring, you know, to get another load, if so be it. I mean, it can, you know what I mean? What, what the county is looking at for this whole proposal is the fact it kind of gives us a little bit of free time to decide what we're going to do with the jail over there, um, whether we turn that into a, more of a holding cells to help with this problem, whether we would look at just completely remodeling that thing what we've got to make it work for just Walworth County inmates. Um, it, it gives us a little time in the process to be able to do that because we know if we, no matter what we do, if we do decide to remodel the project, uh, that building over there, we're going to have to close it down, move everybody out of there, uh, and then go into the remodel process, which that's not going to be something that's just going to happen overnight. So. By doing this type of a transport, it gives us the ability to look into those options, um, find out with this transport, find out with the contract with uh, Falk County where the costs are actually going to really come in at year or two years down the road. 
get a pretty good average, you know, down a couple years down the road. And if, you know, if all worst case scenario that cost comes in where we think it's going to be, um, it just looks like by far the cheapest route. Um, uh, Sheriff talked about the possibility, you know, just what it would cost <coughs> over there to basically run the j jail just for the Walbert County inmates. And with the staffing and everything else, he, his budget was pushing in around the $830,000 range. Um, well, if we can do this based on the numbers that we're talking about, we're going to be looking somewhere in the neighborhood of five and a quarter to, you know, $550,000. Well, we can't even, we can't even start the process of running a jail over there for that. So that's, that's kind of the mindset that we're looking at. Um, talk to three of the other commissioners over there for right now. And, and I think for the most part, everybody's pretty well aware of the, of the process and everybody pretty much on board. Um, that we can look at right now. Um, I guess I don't know if anybody else had any other questions. Everything's clear as mud. I guess my main question what was what the plan was going to be for the existing facility if you were going to be looking into what can be done for it, but you've already answered that, so thank you. Now we're definitely going to look at the process, uh, looking into remodeling. Um, the old, old part of the jail over there is, it really just needs to be tore down. You know, so then it would be a matter of if we just tear that off, what do we do now? Do we put an addition onto that, remodel it, make it work for what we can, you know, just to house our inmates, or just, you know, use what we can do there and fix it up to, to make it work for us. But. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot more uh, research that's going to have to go into that process too, because you're dealing with an old building, and where do you where do you stop and, and start on on that type of stuff when too? When was the so last rebuilt? Or re or when was the last? Uh, <coughs> uh, the new addition on there, I'm I'm not exactly sure, but I well, want to say it was. I was going to say in the late '90s, yeah. yeah. I, re I remember it. Yeah, yep. And that part is, that part is more in compliance than the newer part is. Well, is no, there's issues with that that new part too. the The foundation on that newer part is failing. I want to say it's the northeast corner of that building. So there's there's some stuff that's going to have to be done to to work on that. Um, that's part of the problem. You know, where do you where do you draw the line? I know there's companies out there that can do it. We just have to dig into it, find out what it costs to to do it. Exactly. So the way it kind of sounds is the transport's probably the most cost-effective way to go, as of right now. Right now, looking at that avenue is seems to be the the most cost-effective. Um, and if, like I said, if our numbers are what we think they're going to be, yeah, I mean, based on the based on the sheriff's budget uh, suggestion, what he thought he'd have to have. It's just, it's a no-brainer to me to, to look at the transport idea as an avenue. But uh, I guess, like I said, that's the idea of doing a, a longer-term contract, two, three-year contract, to be able to look at those numbers and say, okay, here's, here's what it did this year, here's what we did next year. It looks like we're falling into that same category. This looks good. Uh, all of a sudden, maybe two years from now, it's gone way up, and then we'd have to relook at that whole thing. and be able to see whether or not this is a more of a, a feasible route or not. But um, I guess I think that's that's kind of what uh, my my feeling is on the on the whole process. I can't speak for the rest of the commissioners, but I think that's where I feel like we need to go look at. Any more questions, comments? Would it be feasible to, if, if we look and start this out and then look at the point of, of uh, setting some money aside on both sides from the county and us to uh, buy a bus of our own for transport uh, in the long run? Uh, 
in case it doesn't work out on the other end, we have a larger <coughs> vehicle for moving stuff or even additional vehicles. <coughs> Feasible. Yeah, that's, that's the only real concern that I have is the transport. I mean, because most likely you're going to have more than one or two needing to go over at a time and you can only fit so many inmates in the back of a feasibly car. feasibly Sean how many can you get in a vehicle if we use our explorer that doesn't have a partition and it's got a full cage in the back we can put three people in the back of that and be comfortable um, we can also ride along the front we would want to use the fear and handcuffs or whatever I mean I don't have a huge problem being that thing here but I mean we could probably okay but do you want four people that were involved in a brawl in one vehicle together. You know, were the, considering if that were the situation. Yeah, no, I mean, if they're, it depends which ones, I mean, like, yeah. I have five people who are on one side one night, that doesn't want to go over one shot. <laughs> <laughs> I would agree. Comments. And bring it up with the one one thing that I think, if Falk County, uh, visiting with them, that was one of the things they've been. The original idea when they built their facility down there that they were always looking into buying a van. Uh, they just they haven't had the the inmate numbers and everything else, and by us going down and guaranteeing them up front they have the dollars to work with uh, it makes their end look a little bit better to where they can physically go purchase a van and, and you know kind of fill that need too um, but it definitely sounded to uh, us when we were down there that that was one of their first priorities that they were going to be looking into getting okay and then they would basically be just charging us a, a rate a fee you know mileage mileage fee and everything else to do that What's the capacity of the uh, jail down in Fall County, Mr. Schlomer? Um, they're, they're, what, we, what we guaranteed them, and we haven't signed a contract with them, we're still working on that, but what we've guaranteed them is basically 10 inmates uh, per day, per year. Okay. That's, you know, so that's kind of what our, our average in Walworth County is anywhere from, it's varied, but basically from, nine to 11 I think in 17 it was uh, 10.7 uh, this year I want to say we're right around 11 so what we've what we've what we basically agreed to uh, verbally is basically guaranteeing them 10 spots and they have they have the capacity I want to say their facility and I I should know this and I apologize for not but I want to say it's like a 30 38 bed facility or 36 okay but they have assured us uh, if we did sign that they would they would keep us uh, where we were guaranteed our spots <coughs> so uh, we have a spot for us there even if they had a prior obligation to their county or so yeah would they would always make sure that we'd have room for our inmates okay even if we're over the 10? Yep. They, they said that we would, uh, if we go over, basically what we end up doing is paying a, a daily fee <coughs> over anything over our dollar a month that we guarantee them if we go over that number. So. And one thing that is in this figures, just to mention too, um, is that when, we, when, when Chief and I sat down and figured the mileage and stuff, we figured it one trip per day. But there may be days that they make more than one trip, and some days they don't make any at all. So if there is a large whatever, maybe a two-trip day, but there may be some days that they don't go, depending on what's going on. Just kind of average out. Right, is what <coughs> the thought is, I guess. Questions, comments? <clears throat> Does everybody feel okay with Heather's numbers? 
sure. <laughs> and you even got three dollars gas, so you even raised up the gas price too. So in case something goes up, so I see that you built that in. Oh yeah. Come on. No, and even in the the contract part down there, about halfway down, where if the county overpays, they've got the option to we'll refund it or whatever. So or carry it forward so I mean there's yeah the theory is not to not for the city to be making money but to break even for it so this is a benefit to the taxpayer to all yes. the taxpayers of Walworth County um, is to simply break even not for the city to gain any extra revenue so it's not a money-making venture it's just to, to keep two entities from making multiple trips down burning the same tax dollar yep. so yeah and, and again like our thought process uh, was on that whole thing was the fact that if we have the jail in Selby and the majority of the inmates are arrested in Mobridge it's the arresting agency that it's their responsibility to get them to that position so we just figured that if if the majority of them are coming out of Mobridge it would make more sense just to have Mobridge as the transportation agency to to take them all the way and then not mess with the in between transportation switching around and then having the sheriff involved getting it down there from that point so yeah because if you read that I think what you're getting at is yeah the arresting agency takes them to the jail whatever yeah no matter no matter where we end up but the if sheriff we close the jail down in Selby and and we decide that Falk County is the jail that we're going to choose then it's Mobridge's responsibility to get them to Falk County. But we just figured that this is a benefit for both Mobridge and for Selby in a sense that we can help with some of that burden and yet it takes burden off of us as far as the county and the sheriff to, to try to get them down there. Because the sheriff's got to go get them, bring them back and all of that good stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be some transportation back for courts that uh, we'll have to try to figure out. You know, and we talked about that, the possibility that with the bus down there in Falk County, um, it might be such a thing that you're down there or something with an, a new arrest that we could bring somebody back if they're coming back for court. So, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, that's kind of the concept behind that. Hopefully we can get everything. And I know there's going to be hitches in there that may not work out exactly planned, but hopefully we can get it to where it starts working smoothly and it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah, I guess the bad guy doesn't really keep a schedule. They don't really care. No. Unfortunately. No, right. All right. The only thing bad about that, they got a longer way to get home. It's too bad. Oops. <laughs> so if everybody feels comfortable with that, um, and no more questions. I guess I would look for a motion to approve this to present it to the be presented at the next county commissioner meeting. Correct, Marion? Yeah. Okay. So moved. Second. Call the roll, please. Carlson. Yes. Mound. Yes. Laundrew. Yes. Riker. Yes. O'Connell. Yes. All right. Thanks, Marion. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Up next, number four, uh, we have appoint Christine Goldsmith as zoning officer. <coughs> I guess I would be looking at this more <coughs> as a temporary because on the 24th, our current zoning officer will be transitioning out and I think we do need a zoning officer and this will cover that until we get to the point where we get something more full time. So, see anybody have any questions on that? You don't feel you'd be overloaded with work? Um, well, this time of year isn't the giant flood, you know, so I think um, I am certainly happy to help out in a pinch and manage that. I mean, unless you get, unless one of you folks <laughs> would like to <laughs> jump in. I mean, we don't have too many more options. Um, you know, everybody has a full-time job. So, it's a good time for transitioning something like that, but it will be something you uh, see on a future agenda, I think, when we come up with a different uh, a different individual than myself. Like you said, I'm not interested in making it a permanent part of the administrator's right. role, but uh, 
um, which is kind of at least for in a pinch. Well, they have somebody you. to sign those. Yeah. Or you could do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You'd be good at it. All right. <laughs> so I guess just in that little short interim there as we transition through, I guess I'd look for a motion to put Christine in as our zoning officer. Do you want the word temporary included in the motion? I think it would. Yeah. It would be. I think it should be that. Okay. Interim, temporary. Temporary. So moved. Second. Set. Call the roll, please. O'Connell? Yes. Riker? Yes. Laundrieu? Yes. Mound? Yes. Carlson? Yes. All right, that brings us to adjournment. So if there's no other business, I would look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Carlson? Yes. O'Connell? Yes. Riker? Yes. Blondrew? Yes. Mound? Yes. All right, meeting adjourned.